Hey everybody, welcome back to Monroe Live. Today we have Jordan Orocha with us, and I want to highlight a little bit of Jordan's experience. Jordan, how many PHEVs, MHEVs, and BEV thermal systems have you seen over the past five to 10 years? 60 to 70, um, between uh, all the benchmarking. At, at the time it was a big mix, but uh, the percentage of BEVs is growing significantly, but about 60 or 70 cars so far. So at Monroe and Associates, we have the luxury of supporting many of our clients with study after study, particularly over the past decade. So when Jordan speaks to what he sees here, um, it's with a preponderance of experience. So <laughs> let's get into this. And so the first thing we see is improvement over the previous Hyundai and Kia that we saw. So we saw the Nero and the Kona. And so far, the first thing we noticed was the material choice on the lines. Jordan, talk about the material choice on the lines and the connectors. Yeah, so Corey, what, what you're seeing here is a lot less um, you know, bra braided rubber hose. The braided rubber hose is expensive. It can be difficult to mold and manage. Um, and you're off, often using um, what you're seeing at the bottom, right? They have one right here, which is a constant tension band. So if you look right here, Zach, got a top constant tension band that requires a tool both for installation and service. Now, all of the other lines in the system that you're seeing, so all of these, you see some corrugation, some smooth. These quick connects are molded nylon lines, which are significantly yeah. lighter. Yeah, and easier to install. Right here we have the material, so PA12, um, so they're nylon 12, and each of the the, the tubes is, uh, is this heat staked or is it heat formed onto the connector, Jordan? Yeah, it's, it's molded onto the connector. It's not a stake, so it's not a, an actual weld, but it's thermally formed onto the connector. And if you back out the shot here, notice that there's two different colors and two different thermal loops. This is most likely to separate a high temperature loop and a low temperature loop. Oftentimes the high voltage electronics will be running at a different temperature than the motor and the batteries. We've seen up to three separate thermal loops with the Chevy Bolt. Tesla uses the octo valve. All of the system is kind of combined. This is not the case here. So very fragmented. You can see there's a three-way valve right here for the ethylene glycol system. Then there is a uh, plate heat exchanger here, a plate heat exchanger there, a thermal expansion valve at the dash um, to interface with the uh, HVAC system, and then a high voltage line running into the cabin, most likely for a PTC heater. Is that correct, Jordan? Yes. Yep. Now, yeah. And Corey, as you were mentioning, like the difference between an octo valve system and this, when you talk about under hood packaging as a whole, it's generally considered a negative thing to, if you just look from the top at a high level, you see lines going forward and backward and across and up and down all over the place. Um, this is because they don't have a central hub. All, all the addresses, if you will, all the connectors are having to go over great lengths, which you may think, well, okay, so you've got more lines, but you're also increasing the amount of actual fluid in the system by increasing the amount of lines and, and yeah. plumbing. Two things we see that are still hearkening back to an internal combustion engine is a traditional lead acid battery. Is that correct, Jordan? Let's see, it's a traditional battery, probably AGM. Um, and then we have a standard fuse box. So let's pop the cover off of this. Right here is the fuse you would pull if you wanted to do any service. Um, although the fuses and relays are smaller than we typically see, it still is something that we saw on all internal combustion engine vehicles. Um, once again, we've seen some OEMs completely eliminate the need for serviceable fuses. Yeah. For when you were talking about packaging, one of the things that popped out to me is in this area, looking at the brake system, so you've got your e-boost unit underneath uh, attached to the dash panel here. And what you'll see are two separate reservoirs, brake fluid reservoirs. You'll see one at the top of the e-boost here, and then you'll see another one out at the face of the cowl. So I, from, from how it's packaged, I think it's probably due to two things. One, by having this separate reservoir out here, it's serviceable, right? So when you open the hood, whether the technician or the owner can see the level, fill it up, service it. 
The other thing is they may not have enough reservoir volume or space back by the dash. So, you know, you see uh, some compromises from a packaging perspective. Yeah. Looking at the high voltage electronics, every iteration of powertrain we've seen from this OEM, we've seen shrink in size. This box, this power, distribu power distribution box, it has an output going to the high voltage AC compressor. I do like the fact that it's a short run. The high voltage AC compressor or heat pump as it's used for this vehicle is hard mounted to the front drive unit. The inverter for the front drive unit Still a separate box, but hard mounted, I'd say halfway integrated into the electric drive module, the motor and gearbox. Um, there's two outputs right here, two high voltage outputs. One loops around and it goes to what we believe to be a high voltage PTC heater for the ethylene glycol system, most likely to heat the battery. And then this other line is the one that routes down and around and goes into the cabin. Yeah. What we like to see as engineers here is elegance and design. We see a lot of improvement over what we've, see, uh, what we've seen in the past, particularly with the Kona and the Nero, which Jordan and I review, but still weighs a, a long ways for improvement. This is the all wheel drive version. It did have a small frunk, which we highlighted in another episode but still much to be desired um, and it'll be interesting to see if the all wheel if the rear wheel drive version so the the lower end version of this has a much deeper front um, we can probably look that up and uh, is there anything else jordan that pops out at you yeah just something interesting sort of a legacy kia and we've seen it on other vehicles like toyota sienna had done it um, but you'll see that this little panel right here actually exposes your cabin filter for your HVAC. So on a typical HVAC system, you got to be a contortionist to get under the dash and get to those filters for service. Um, Key has sort of done you a favor and, and made it pretty accessible. Um, but you know, they are, there's always a packaging sacrifice, right? So in this case, they're, they're eaten into the uh, underhood area a little bit, but Nothing too special, just kind of an interesting point there. And this is something that we saw them do in 2016 on the, on the Sedona and a few other vehicles. Mm. And one last thing about the thermal system, if you, can, if you can get the camera in here. These plate heat exchangers, here, here, and there, notice that their heights are all different. And these are knobs that you can turn during the development process to either add plates or decrease plates to tailor the thermal system to, to get exactly right for this vehicle. Then if you take this same powertrain and plop it into a bigger vehicle or a smaller vehicle, those heat exchangers may be overkill and it's very easy to change the manufacturing of the number of plates that are stacked. It's that type of parametric design that's really necessary to help OEMs employ the exact same powertrain over, over a, a multitude of drive scenarios and vehicle sizes. Yeah, it's a really good point, Corey. It's, it's interesting as we get into more and more EVs, we're working with a client right now that's actually using that same principle of adding or removing laminates to scale to a specific program, but they're doing it with the motor. So as the vehicle mass develops, as they uh, sort of hone the design in terms of what they need in terms of like uh, functional objectives and performance, they're using the laminate stack and the motor to tailor what they want for the vehicle. Yeah. yeah. All right, I think that's all for this episode. We're gonna do a hoist review next. And uh, one last thing, we are hiring at Monroe & Associates. I know Sandy mentioned it in previous episodes. I've been at Monroe for 17 years. Jordan, you've been here for over a decade. It's a phenomenal place to work. We get access to dozens and dozens of cutting edge vehicles. This one provided for free from Hyundai as a press vehicle. So if you want to be exposed to some of the, the most awesome products in the world and help uh, new product development, send us an email with your resume, hr at leandesign.com. All right, thanks everybody, bye.